I'm Eric Singer, Gazette.com, and this is City Chat, where we go beyond the sound bites to get you real information about real situations happening in the Pikes Peak region and what's being done to solve them. Joining me, as always, Mayor John Southers of Colorado Springs. Eric, good to see you. Thank you, sir. And my co host, Gazette reporter Billy Stanton on Lay. Thanks, Eric. Billy, Thank you, Mayor, you. for coming in. All right, Billy, go ahead and start the questioning. Mayor, um, last June, when you met with the council for the first time and started establishing the um, cooperation um, base that you've achieved with the council, you suggested three ordinances that the council has acted on. The sit lie ordinance, the cannabis clubs ordinance, and I'm not positive, but I think you were concerned also about grow houses with medical marijuana. And so those are three things that the council has been addressing. And I frankly thought that I was finished writing about the sit lie ordinance and now it's uh, back in the news again. There's going to be a sit in, there's going to be a rally, um, people are concerned, and I think less about the ordinance itself as, as the notion that the homeless are being marginalized and, and need more help. And I know all about the continuum of care and Amy Cox and the rescue mission and the things that are going on to address that, but there does seem to be a, a group of people who are still very concerned about that law. The second one, the cannabis clubs, um, you've seen undoubtedly the, the outpouring of you know the groups of people who have been coming to council meetings since last fall, since September, to um, testify about the cannabis clubs. Um, one person who owns a cannabis club is, is about to announce his candidacy for the city council. Um, an, a group for veterans is having some kind of spring bake, bake off this weekend to provide um, marijuana to veterans who are um, no longer active, who can show their ID. Um, there are all of these things going on suddenly that seem to be um, some kind of reactionary, um, not reactionary, but reactions to what the council has done. And because you were the idea man behind, behind these ordinances originally, and you were encouraging the council to please step up and do something about what you saw as three significant problems in the city, um, I just wonder how you feel about um, some of the some of the fallout from from what's happened on these three laws. Uh, first of all, Billy, uh, I expect that there's going to be opposition to virtually anything you do. There's very few things that everybody in the community says, "Oh, this is a great idea." Let's let's take them one at a time. Uh, number one, uh, don't sit, don't lie. Um, we have a problem. Uh, in downtown Colorado Springs with people sitting and lying, and in, in other areas, but primarily downtown Colorado Springs, sitting and lying on sidewalks and obstructing uh, public access. This has ramifications, and I hear from people all the time who say, I don't go downtown because I don't want to walk through a maze of people uh, lying downtown. From my perspective, and I think the, the perspective of the majority of the council, and I would suggest the perspective of the vast majority of the citizens of Colorado Springs, uh, there's uh, a difference between uh, dealing with the homeless problem and providing services for the homeless and telling everybody it's perfectly okay to sit or lie on our sidewalks. Uh, and in fact, that's been the uh, position of the courts. Uh, Sit-lie ordinances have, have performed well in courts, have been upheld, uh, because it's an appropriate thing for cities to do to uh, make pedestrian access available uh, and to encourage economic uh, uh, development by encouraging people to come into the uh, shopping areas of the community. The homeless can uh, uh, sleep on sidewalks at night. Uh, after the, the time period expires, they can lie in parks and lo and behold, they can sit on a whole variety of benches uh, and places available for them uh, to do so. They simply can't lie uh, or sit uh, on the sidewalk. I think it's a, a very appropriate law. I think the vast majority of the citizens of Colorado Springs agree with it. There's a small group that doesn't, and they're perfectly entitled to have protests uh, to their heart's content, uh, and uh, uh, I'm not surprised that we're having a group uh, protest. The cannabis clubs. Uh, I would encourage everybody to read Amendment 64 and, and uh, see if 
people who would vote for 64 uh, thought that they were approving of cannabis clubs. I would suggest that the cannabis clubs arose as a result of a certain segment of the population that wants to be in this business thinking, I think there's a loophole that I can squeeze through here. Uh, and that's where cannabis clubs have, have, uh, have come from. There's a, a real debate whether or not uh, it's public consumption uh, because it's not in your private home. It's a commercial uh, consumption, and it may well not be uh, a private consumption. But over and above that, the model that most of these places have developed, uh, you walk in, you pay a fee, and then you get delivered uh, their marijuana. That's clearly, uh, or at least I would argue, uh, clearly violative of the law in Colorado because it's an indirect sale of the marijuana. Uh, and one would question whether it's a viable business model to simply have a place where people can bring their own marijuana and maybe you sell them uh, things to uh, eat and things like that. But I think it's totally appropriate uh, given the fact that there's no express authorization uh, statewide without any kind of local government intervention uh, for uh, local governments to uh, regulate and prohibit uh, if they're so inclined. Okay, can I play devil's advocate on, on a, a couple of things? One, sure. on the cannabis clubs, um, you know, the question arose at the last city council meeting, well, you know, they've been having this model where they provide you with marijuana and you pay dues or you make a donation or you sign a thing saying, you grew my six plants for me. Um, and, and there has been no effort other than at the lion's lair or whatever it is, um, there has been no concerted law enforcement effort to go in and um, enforce the city ordinance that says you cannot uh, have retail recreational sales in the city. And so what, what I'm curious about is, you know, having listened to these people for months now, for hours on end, um, talk about how my landlord won't let me smoke in my apartment. I have nowhere to go. Um, or I'm a veteran with PTSD. I was isolated in my home, and, and now I have a community where I can go. Is there, is there room, it may not be business savvy, but is there room in Colorado Springs for clubs, for people who are barred from smoking in public or you know, using marijuana in any form in public under state law um, to have a place where they can go and not, and bring their own and, and not procure it there. Um, they can go over to their friend's house. Well, what if they don't have a friend who owns no, they, a house? They might or, want to think you know. about developing a friend that's got a house. But um, the, uh, there's all kinds of issues that you bring up. Um, you know, should veterans with PTSD be uh, smoking marijuana? Big, big issue. Most of the research I've seen says they shouldn't be. Um, do, do we really have, uh, uh, you know, um, I, I heard one woman say, I don't want to smoke in front of my five-year-old at home, so I want to go to club. You may want to think about not engaging in the activity if it's something you don't think your, your five-year-old would be properly uh, uh, influenced by. I think there's a lot of uh, social uh, decisions and, that people have to make about uh, the way they conduct their lives that don't necessarily uh, translate that I have to have a place to go engage in this activity uh, uh, that, you know, th this is still a very evolving, all of, the, one, one of the things we, we fail to talk about with, uh, with much frequency is everything we're talking about here is in violation of federal law, everything. The clubs are uh, in violation, the, the growing in your homes in violation of federal law. Uh, there's, that, there's that overlay over this whole thing. It's very complicated. Uh, and I simply don't have a problem with the council trying to work through uh, these various issues and what's good or bad for the community. And uh, um, I applaud them, the majority of them, for coming to a conclusion that um, cannabis clubs are probably not in the best interest of the, uh, of the community. There's, you, you may have a different opinion. Uh, lots of other people may have a dif different opinion. Uh, people will run for city council and say, you know, they've been anti-marijuana, we want to be more pro-marijuana. I mean, that's what uh, the public square is all about. But um, uh, given the, the legal uh, overlay in this whole stuff, a uh, whole picture, I think the council's acted pretty responsibly. 
Okay, but if I, I guess my question is, if I have a medical problem and I've been prescribed marijuana and it's actually helping me with my seizures or whatever. Prescribed and I, or you have a authorization? A medical card, okay. you know, medical marijuana card. And I have a five-year-old and I don't want to take marijuana when I'm with my five-year-old. I want to get a babysitter to come in and I want to go somewhere and I don't have a place to go. All of my friends are renters, landlords don't allow, um, whatever. You know, if I'm in a situation where I need a private place to smoke and I don't have one, can you see any reason to have a cannabis club that does not dispense recreational marijuana that people at which people have to bring their own medical marijuana, not recreational because that's, you know, um, oh, okay, so you're talking person. about a, 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 a I, I don't think we'd call it a club. It I would think be like a social a club. club. But no, we're not socializing, we're taking medicine, right? That's what well, you're Well, and also socializing. No, I mean, well, these are people, you know. Those are two dramatically different things. Someone who says, I take this for medicinal purposes and I need a place to do it because I don't want to do it in front of my five-year-old. That's different from, from a socialization. Well, it can be both. I mean, I've, I've heard arguments from people on, on both sides that they want to socialize with people who, you know, have the same okay. viewpoint so that they do. Talking and about they a, also, well, that's, a community that's center. Well, that's how some of okay. them feel about the okay. cannabis club is that it's like a community center. And I, t I totally get the okay. questions of legality on what's going on now. Right. Okay, I mean, what if all the meth addicts said, I want to have a club? Well, meth is against the law. Medical marijuana is not against the law in Colorado. Quick, quick final thought. Uh, a lot of interesting things going on in... Uh, uh, Colorado, just want to give you a couple of up updates. Um, January tax revenues were very healthy. 7,400 new jobs in uh, uh, Colorado Springs last year. That's a, a huge increase over what we've had over the last uh, decade. So uh, things are moving in the right direction. Uh, I'm working hard in resolving uh, some of the stormwater issues that we've talked about, the <laughs> infrastructure. Uh, folks, uh, we're only about a month away from uh, seeing a lot of activity in terms of uh, paving, uh, uh, hit the streets because the paving season will be coming up end of April, early May, and you'll see that 2C money being expended. And thank you for watching City Chat, where we go beyond the sound bites to get you answers to pressing issues in the Pikes Peak region. Until next time, I'm Eric Singer, Gazette.com. We'll see you then.